about 4,300 kilometers east of Moscow, at about 580 north of the Mongolian capital of Ulaanbaatar, sits Olkhon Island. Stretching 70 kilometers long and 15 kilometers wide, Olkhon is the third largest lake island in the world. It sits embraced by the Great Siberian Lake, known as Baikal which holds more fresh water than all of the North American Great Lakes combined. It is in fact the world's largest freshwater lake by volume, containing 22 to 23 percent of the world's fresh surface water. With a total surface area of 31,722 kilometers, it is just bigger than Belgium and could be the 140th largest country. It is also the world's deepest and oldest lake, estimated to be 25 to 30 million years old, and is confirmed to be 1,642 meters deep. Unsurprisingly, this is a place shrouded in mystery. But no part of this lake is home to more myths and legends than Alcon Island. There are two versions regarding the origin of the name of the island, and both are derived from the language of the Buryats. The first is that the island's name comes from the word Oihon, woody. And the second is that it comes from Ohan, dry. It is still debated which of the two is the actual origin of the name, as both words are good at describing what the island is like, covered by forests. And the amount of precipitation is extremely low, about 240 mm per year. Alcon also has a dramatic combination of terrain, as steep mountains line its eastern shore. The island is large enough to have its own lakes, and features a combination of taiga, steppe and even a small desert. A deep strait separates the island from the land, but it can be traversed for about three to four months each year, as the whole lake freezes over starting in January to early May or June. The population of the island is less than 1,744. There are several settlements and five villages on the island. Khuzhir is the administrative capital of Olkhon, designated as such in April 1987 when the Soviet government issued a comprehensive decree protecting Lake Baikal. Kujir is home to about 1,200 residents and boasts a museum of nature and history. Most residents are fishermen, farmers or cattle ranchers. These residents are mostly made up from the native Buryats, a Mongolian people numbering around half a million members who make up one of two largest indigenous groups in Siberia. The majority of the Buryat population lives in the Republic of Buryatia a federal subject of Russia in and around Lake Baikal, as well as the surrounding republics. Buryats share many customs with other Mongols, including nomadic herding and erecting gurs for shelter. While the majority live in Ulan Ud, the capital of Buryat Republic, many still follow a traditional lifestyle in the countryside. The establishment of the border in 1727 between the Russian Empire and Qing China is considered as the beginning of a formation of an independent Buryat ethnic group. As Russians were advancing to annex western parts of Baikal and then the eastern in the mid-17th century, Buddhism was rapidly spreading amongst the eastern Buryats and beginning to penetrate west. Buddhism, however, did not manage to take hold amongst western Buryats where the policy of Christianization was enforced. As such, Eastern Buryats enjoyed greater tolerance and even encouragement of Buddhism by the government. In the mid-18th century, the Russian government officially recognized Buddhism amongst Western Buryats as an independent Lemaist church on Russian territory. This was probably done to secure Buryats' allegiances to St. Petersburg, as opposed to the Mongols or the Dalai Lama in Tibet. And because Eastern Buryats were strategically located in a frontier region between Russia and Qing China, another reason for the government to support Buddhism amongst the Eastern Buryats might have been the urge to eradicate shamanism, which was the main competitor to Buddhism in the region. As a result, ethnographers generally divide Buryats into two large groups, depending on their location in relation to Lake Baikal. Eastern and Western. Olkhon Island, in a sense, demarcates the border between Eastern and Western Buryats. There are also pretty strong cultural differences between East and Western sides of the lake. In the West, there are no Buddhist monasteries in view, and in general, while speaking about Buddhism, people there somewhat lack religious enthusiasm for it. It would be hard to argue that in going back before time, Russian ancestors, depending on their location, practiced various pagan belief systems. And the most prevalent around Lake Baikal had always been shamanism, or tangerism as it's called locally. Shamanism was generally considered to be a very backwards Asiatic practice 
damaging to the image of Russia as a rational European empire as envisioned by Catherine the Great. And it is still a view held by many today, who argue that Buddhism should fully replace shamanism, as it is the superior, more complete religion, capable of establishing a nationhood by providing a useful framework for the creation of code of laws and the development of culture. Despite this criticism, shamanism survived, and following the fall of the Soviet Union, it is currently experiencing a revival on both shores of Lake Baikal and it enjoys an especially strong following amongst Western Buryats who have had fewer historical ties to Buddhism and Alkhon occupies a mythical place in Buryat imagination because their cosmic myths are linked to Baikal which is considered to be the geographical and shamanic center of all Buryats. Shamanism is essentially a system of beliefs that focuses on the worship of nature. It involves interacting with what shamans believe to be the spirit world through altered states of consciousness such as trance. The goal of this is usually to direct spirits or spiritual energies into the physical world for the purpose of healing divination or to aid human beings in some other way. It is not a religion, not yet. There is no fixed dogma, no strict set of beliefs, and no sacred book. It is more of a way of life built around the belief that the visible world is penetrated by invisible energy forces with a spirit world that affects our lives. The most powerful shamans are believed to maintain the ability to heal the sick, control the weather, and act as mediums between both worlds. At its core, shamanism is about spiritual healing through the strengthening of our human connection to nature. The word shaman itself means one who knows. The beauty and peaceful isolation of Okon Island and Lake Baikal is like nowhere else, creating a clear precedent for this to be a spiritual center. Pristine sandy beaches, steep cliffs, enchanting rock formations, and water so clear and fresh you can drink it directly. Cape Burkhan, more commonly referred to as Shaman Rock, is the center of ritual activity on the island. Legend has it that Azin, the lord of Lake Baikal, lives in the cave inside the rock, and local shamans still perform their rituals here. Others believe the cave is the true burial place of Chinggis Khan. Vladimir Obruchev, a Russian scientist who explored the area in the late 1800s, wrote about the remarkable superstitious fear that the Alkon Buryats have towards this place. It used to be impermissible to ride past the rock on wheels, only on horseback. And even then, horses' hooves would be covered in felt and leather in order not to disturb the cave's inhabitants. The lake and the incredible heritage of the location has brought increasing numbers of visitors from all over the world who started to come after the fall of the Soviet Union. Tourism has become an important part of the economy. And in Siberia, their indigenous knowledge has given them a unique economic resource thanks to the arrival of eco- and ethno-tourism. In other words, shamans who have traditionally served as major repositories of local knowledge, in addition to being mediators between the spirit worlds and human worlds, have now become literal mediators between their people and the larger world through taking on the roles and sometimes jobs of cultural guides, explaining their traditions to the global community. Other shamans from different regions of Siberia routinely make appearances at international shamanic gatherings, take part in indigenous exchanges and travel abroad to treat their foreign clients and even give college lectures. Although it is easy to criticize the commodification of shamanism and Siberia's natural beauty as the end of authentic culture, it is a product of economic growth, progress, and a path towards a better standard of living. And it opens up the possibility of recognizing shamanism as a real-world religion. Alcon Island is unique. There isn't anywhere you can compare it to. For this reason, I hope that it remains protected. On the one hand, I would love to visit this sacred place. But on the other, tourism is rather quickly leaving its mark, challenging the lives of countless unique creatures who have been there long before the first humans even walked the earth. This is literally my best video. You're missing out if you haven't watched it. It's about another incredible island. Click right here. And this is my Patreon map. Here I say thanks to my super fans, especially Stefitz, Max H and Kevin Post. As always, thank you for support. And have you yet figured out I like maps? A lot of the videos I make come with their own maps that you can own. 100% of the profit goes towards giving me enthusiasm to make more videos. Now guess where this footage was taken and I will see you soon. Geoperspective out.